And the subtitle of the book is The Experience of Creative Flow. Right. What do you mean by, well, what do you mean by the experience? Well, um, so if you think of those two worlds that are sort of present in all, all the trance models, you've got the creative unconscious, which I think is, I liken it to a, a quantum world of infinite possibilities. So everything's there, the whole history yeah. of consciousness is there. And then you've got this conscious world, we call the classical world, which is this place of time and, and space. So the question is, how does, how does consciousness move from one world to the other world? And you know, the, the, and the model I suggest is it moves through these filters. Mm -hmm. the nervous system is a filter. Yeah. Your history is a filter. Your culture is a filter, etc., etc., etc. So what what we see is how this consciousness and, and the information is passing between these two worlds through the filters that a person is holding. Yeah. Now these filters can be held either in a tight way so that they're sort of opaque. I call that neuromuscular law. Yeah. And when that happens, the flow between the two worlds is blocked. Yeah. So you, you're caught inside your map, usually. Mm -hmm. Or, on the other hand, uh, less common, you would, might be psychotic. Because yeah. you're just totally in the unconscious, but, but you don't have any, any foot in or any presence in the, the classical yeah. world. So, to have this sense of a participation in these two worlds, which is the essence of creativity, mm -hmm. you have to have these filters set so that there's a flow. Yeah. And the flow is not like, I don't mean that by that, just a California airy-fairy flow. But you know, one, one of the terms I use there, it's, it's a disciplined flow. Yeah. Uh, so the, one of the key ideas in all of hypnosis and many related areas like meditation or things like the MDR is the suggestion just let it happen. Yeah. Yeah, just, it's got to come from some other place. So that's that's part of what is meant by flow. And those filters you liquidify a little bit, so you make them a little yeah. bit loose, so everything right. starts flowing. That's right. And you know, there's an idea in, in uh, a, a phrase in um, Buddhism: not too tight, not too loose. Yeah. So, for most people, they're too tight. Yeah. You know, they, you get too much in your head. But you can be too loose, too. Yeah. You know, if you're just like, hey, whatever, man. So, so you're trying to find the sweet yeah. spot yeah. where there's flow, but there's also discipline. Yeah. And so, a generative trance is seeing how you can attune the quality of experience so that it's not too tight, not too loose. Like in the balance. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's a balance. And, and, and the balance is, as, is always changing, yeah. you know, in any dynamic system. It's always changing, so you, you have to have some way to be monitoring and adjusting. And again, it, it's, a, it's a basic feature of creative performance. Yeah. Well, what's a balance in one moment is, is probably not a balance in the next moment. Yeah. You're, you're always adjusting. And the neuromuscular lock, how can you prevent that? So a lot of people in this society now have you know, challenges. How, how can you kind of loosen that? Well, that's to me, that, that's what a trance induction is. So a person comes in, for example, and you say, well, when would you want to use a trance? Some people would say, oh, you, sh you should be in a trance 24-7. And I say, grow up. You know, yeah. Is that it, it, it's not the... Uh, the euphoric state that you want to live in. You know, I, I live in California, and uh, we actually had ex-governors who were in deep trance, and they became presidents of the United <laughs> States. Yeah. So it's good to, to not be in trance some of the time. But when, when, would you want to when would you want to use a trance? Whenever what you're doing is not working, and you try it again, and it still isn't working. And maybe you try it a third time, and it still isn't working. So that you realize whatever my setting is, whatever my mapping is, it's not working. It doesn't mean I'm bad, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm stupid, but it's not fitting or it's not working. So you've got to take a step back and you've got to loosen your maps and you've got to step back into the creative world so your old maps can be able to uh, deconstruct 
you go back into this creative source and then you find how to reconstruct. So that's what a trance induction is. And so a trance induction is a set of communications that are designed to help you to do that. To help you to, to relax, not only relax, yeah. but to have this uh, openness, to have a, a sort of a musicality, to have a groundedness, so, so forth and so on. So once you get a taste of that, if I'm hearing correctly, the, the further question is, how do you, how are you able to, to have that accessible as a skill, yeah. so that anytime, anywhere, you can enter into that state? And really, the the simple answer to that is practice, practice, practice. There's, there's no substitution for it. You are only as good as your practices. Yeah. Yeah. And so people say, well, trust the unconscious. Your unconscious is as helpful as your as the amount of time you put into good practices. And any creative performer will, will yeah. you know, I'll tell you, they, they outwork their competitors. You know, they're more committed, they're more devoted, and they practice more. Now, of course, not to practice in and of itself. You have to be practicing correctly yeah. and, and have helpful practices. But it's a lot of work. Yeah. You know, uh, to achieve that level of excellence yeah. that you're looking for. Yeah, it's a lot of work. But, you know, hopefully, I mean, the thing about doing stuff like this is it's, it's work that's uh, in, in, incredibly fun and incredibly illuminating. So it's not like, oh, shit, I'm going to work oh, I'm going into trans and staying centered. I mean, you, you want to find a way to work that uh, it's liberating. Yeah. You know, it's fun. It, it, the, the, the more that you put your, your total intense concentration into it, the more it's like, wow, this is a great, great uh, life that I've got. Yeah, a lifestyle. Lifestyle, yeah. But it, but it, take, it takes a lot of work. Mm. Because, you know, what, what, what we really look at in trance in terms of really significant changes, it's, it's, it's one thing to let go of your maps and to get into a pleasant state. And that's good. It's good to know that. Yeah. But it really only makes a difference when you can maintain that state under challenging circumstances. Yeah, because yeah. Th that's what's really going to allow you to make a difference. So that's, that's more challenging when, when you're getting pushed, when people are screaming at you, when, when what you're doing is, isn't uh, working uh, the way that you did it. There's a lot of neuromuscular lock yeah. that goes on there. So I think what the trance practice is teach you is not so much booga 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 or I will let my unconscious take care of everything but I know how to let go of what do I do what do I do what do I do which we might call the, the orienting response it's, yeah. it's, you know, uh, um, uh, neuropsychologically uh, which is the stress best response I know how to go into my center I know how to open the space so that these resources from from this creative part of it can flow forward and I know how to hold it not too tight, not too loose. Yeah. And that's a function of knowing how to do it, which is what the book tries to explicate. Yeah. And then having the commitment to, to practice it on a, on a daily basis.